Okay, here we're going to look at something you probably have heard of before and are familiar with, but may not fully understand, and that's the topic of pH. You might be familiar with the pH scale uh, from 0 to 14. Uh, acids are the lower end, bases are the higher end, neutral is 7, which is pure water. Uh, there's certain indicators that will turn different colors based on pH. We want to try to understand it from a molecular level now. So first off, to start, pH, what does that even stand for? It equals the potential of hydrogen. This scale is logarithmic, meaning it's not linear, and we're going to see um, how, what impact each of these pH numbers mean. It's used to determine the acidity or basicity of water based on an aqueous solution. There's also something called pOH, which is the potential for hydroxide. So potential for hydrogen, pH, that's referring to hydrogen here, hydroxide is OH. This is the opposite of pH. Essentially, pH plus PO, pOH equals 14. That's our 0 to 14 scale. So if we take a pH at the bottom here of 7, 7 plus what equals 14? Well, 7 plus 7 is 14. So the pH is 7. In this case, the pOH is also 7. However, anywhere else is where it starts to get a difference. Something we may consider an acid, for example, pH of 2, kind of right around near stomach acid, very acidic, very strong acid. pH of 2, that same substance is going to have a pOH of 12, because 2 plus 12 will give us 14. Same thing if we look at a basic solution here, pH of 10, it's going to have a pOH of 4, because again, 10 plus 4 equals 14. Continuing on with our acids and bases, an acid is a substance that increases the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. So our acids here are pH of 0 to just under uh, 7. Hydrochloric acid, lemon juice, grapefruit juice, tomato juice, usually uh, soft drink, urine, saliva, coffee, soda, vinegar, all of these are examples of acids. What I try to put here is as the pH decreases, as we get more acidic here, as this decreases, the hydrogen ion will increase. So these stronger pHs, these lower pH levels, will have higher, higher concentration of hydrogen ions. Bases. Any substance that reduces the hydrogen ion concentration in the solution is a base. Some bases reduce hydrogen ions directly by accepting hydrogen ions. Examples of base solutions here, again, they just happen to be at the top, would be baking soda, pH around 9.5, bleaches, drain cleaners, ammonias, seawater is actually slightly basic. Uh, these are examples of solutions that are basic. Now the pH scale, as I said, the pH is an aqueous solution of the hydrogen ion concentration times the hydroxide concentration equal 10 to the minus 14th here. This measures the degree of acidity from that 0 to 14 scale. In relation to biology, most biological fluids are in the pH range of 6 to 8, and each pH unit represents a tenfold difference. The scale is logarithmic. A small change in pH actually indicates a substantial change in hydrogen ion and hydroxide ion concentrations. So what does that look like? We look uh, right over uh, here, for example. We're looking at pH of 1. Uh, our hydronium ion, our hydrogen ion, is 0.1. We go 1 point. We notice we move that decimal point one point to the left. We go another pH point, well, we have to move that another tenfold. So we can see that this is a logarithmic, this is not linear, it's a logarithmic. We have this massive increase in change in the correlation of pH values to hydrogen ion concentrations. So as from three to five, you know, it's only one, it's only two, two pH differences, right? It's only a pH difference of two. Well, remember, we're moving it tenfold each time. So 10, 100 times more acidic is pH 3 to pH 5. There's something called strong acids and strong bases. Strong acids and bases completely dissolve in water, as we see here. HCl dissolving completely into hydrogen ions and chloride ions. Sodium hydroxide, same there, into sodium ions and hydroxide ions. In contrast to that, there's something called weak acids and weak bases. And these dissociate only partially and kind of are re reversible. So if we go back to the strong acids, we'll notice that the arrow goes one way. Here we have this kind of state of equilibrium. The arrow's going this way, and these are kind of flipping back. These hydrogen ions are rebinding, and it's going back and forth. 
This is an example of a weak acid, and this is a weak base because it's going back and forth. It doesn't just go to completion in one way and completely dissociate. So water is both an acid and a base, which seems initially a little confusing. Well, if we take a strong acid, such as hydrochloric acid, and add it to the same concentration of a base, in this case sodium hydroxide, we actually get, it's called a double replacement, but we get water and salt. We get salt water, basically, from a very strong acid and a very strong base. The reason why it's both an acid and a, and a base is we see it's an equilibrium here. H2O is going back and forth between hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. Now, ideally in pure water, this will be an even kind of split, and this will give us a pH of 7. As we increase the hydrogen ions, we then create an acidic solution. So we could see here's our H, HOH is the same as H2O. Here's our chloride from here. Here's our sodium. So this is kind of giving you an idea of how things, these bonds can switch places and give us very different end substances. The pH scale. The pH scale is the concentration of hydrogen ions in a given substance. pH equals the negative log of hydrogen ions. So we can see here at a pH of 7, we have an equal number of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions. As we increase the acidity, we notice the hydrogen ion percent is vastly increasing. Just the same opposite will happen if we increase the basicity, the hydroxide ions will increase here. See, it stays in a nice box, and that house always comes to equal 14. We take our pH and add it to our pOH. Now, developing a problem here. So, how much greater is the hydrogen ion concentration in a solution with pH 2 than a solution with pH 6? So, we're looking at hydrogen ion concentration. We have our pHs. Let's go through how we're going to solve this. So, the answer here is a pH of 2 has a hydrogen ion concentration of 1 100th molar. pH of 6, hydrogen ion concentration of 1 times 10 to the minus 6. So we'll notice it's a much smaller number, 1 1 millionth here. So how do we get this? Well, by using the log function, you need a calculator to do this. You can uh, do this a couple examples here. We have 10 to the minus 2, because that's what the 2 is indicating. The 6 is to the minus 6. And we can see that the difference between these two numbers is 10,000 times greater, 2 to 6. So when people say, oh, pH of 2 or 6, well, it's still an acid. 2 to 6, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, well, it's only like 4-ish different pH units. It's not that much different. It's actually 10,000 times greater hydrogen ion concentration of pH 2 compared to 6. So you can see it makes a large difference. Buffers are very important. There are substances that resist a change in pH. Buffers help organisms maintain the pH of the body fluids in a narrow range necessary for life. Uh, the combinations of hydrogen ions, acceptors, and donors form a solution of weak acids and bases. So it's buffering the solution. This works by accepting hydrogen ions uh, from solution when they're in excess and donating hydrogen ions when they have been depleted. So what's happening with a buffer, it's kind of helping reduce the large swings that may occur in solution. We see distilled water, almost no buffering solution. We add a little bit of volume of NOH added to add like one drop, and we see the pH jump up drastically. In buffered solutions, we see that pH maintain a much more consistent range and only slowly increase. That's what a buffer is doing, while well, slowing or reducing the massive differences or swings in pH. It's very important, for example, for blood pH. Our, our normal pH is between 7.34 and 7.38. pH of 7 or 7.8, we're getting into very dangerous ranges. pH of 6 or 9 of blood pH leads to death. This is why it's important we have buffers to help maintain this normal pH in this tight range so that we can allow us to survive and allow our proteins to function properly and allow us to be able to carry out our normal bodily functions.